Thank you, Mr. Phelps. You're recognized for five minutes. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, good morning. My name is Michael Phelps. I'm a retired professional swimmer and an Olympian. I want to thank the committee for the opportunity to appear here before you today. It's a privilege to, to be here to share my thoughts and perspective on the issue of clean sport, which is important to so many athletes and to sport in general. I competed internationally for over 15 years and had the tremendous honor to represent the United States in five Olympic Games and six World Championships. Without question, many of my proudest moments have been representing my country in international competition. There's no greater feeling than standing on top of the podium watching the Stars and Stripes rise as the national anthem plays. The Rio Olympics were special for me because it gave me the opportunity to end my career on my terms and to do it with my wife, Nicole, and son, Boomer, watching. But it was also unique because of increased doping concerns. I watched how this affected my teammates and fellow competitors. We all felt the frustration. Looking back over my career and knowing how difficult it is to get to the highest levels of sport, I can't help but wonder how the next generation of athletes will be able to do it if this uncertainty continues. As a child, I found school difficult. I had ADHD, which probably contributed to my restlessness. I'll never forget being told by one of my teachers that I'd never amount to anything. It was swimming that enabled me to see past those challenges and not be defined by them. My mom put my sisters and me in the pool so we'd be water safe. At first, like many children, I was afraid to put my head under the water. But by overcoming that fear, I got my first taste of self-confidence. As it turned out, I was pretty good in the water. And I quickly realized that the harder I worked, the quicker I improved. I found a focus and a purpose I'd never felt before. I would set goals for myself and work like crazy until I accomplished them. Dreams would just pop into my head whenever I got into the pool. I'd dream about becoming a gold medalist, a world record holder. I wanted to be the best. I talked with my coach so we could come up with a plan, not just for what I was doing in the pool, but also how I could better myself away from the pool. I made up my mind to do everything I could to make my dream a reality. In school, I had friends, but I wasn't that social. I focused on swimming. At times, I was made fun of for what I was doing because it was different. I was in love with challenging myself to become the best athlete that I could be. I felt that every single day was an opportunity for me to do something special when I went to the pool. I always felt that the kids who worked the hardest got the best results. That's why I pushed myself as hard as I could. Over a five-year period, I trained every single day without a day off. I figured by training on holidays, I'd be able to get that extra edge. As, a part of my hard work and or as my hard work and sacrifice began to pay off, my confidence grew, and I began, that if I, could I began to feel that if I could dream something and gave everything I had, that anything was possible. The strength of that belief drove me to set goals that others might have thought were unrealistic. That's one amazing thing about competitive sport. It demands that you believe in yourself. This isn't always easy. There were so many times I could have quit and walked away. Sticking with it required me to dig deep, especially knowing that after all the work and sacrifice, success might be determined by just a hundredth of a second. In those critical moments that you really test your commitment and that can ultimately define your career, you need to believe that if you push on, you'll get the opportunity to measure yourself, your preparation, your desire, your talent, against others who have prepared themselves in the same exact way. Throughout my career, I've thought that some athletes were cheating, and in some cases, those suspicions were confirmed. Giving all the testing I and so many others have been through, I have a hard time understanding this. In addition to the tests and competitions, I had to notify USADA as to where I was every day, so they would be able to conduct random tests during outside of, outside of competition. This whole process takes a toll, but it's absolutely worth it to keep the sport clean and fair. I can't describe how frustrating it is to see other athletes break through performance barriers in unrealistic time frames, knowing what I had to do to go through that. I watched how this affected my teammates as well. Even the suspicion of doping is disillusioning for clean athletes. To believe in yourself through sport, you need to be able to believe in the system that safeguards clean sport and fair play. All, all athletes must be held to the same standards 
which need to be implemented and enforced with consistency and independence. For years now, I've worked closely with kids. Most of these kids aren't swimmers, but they're eager to sit down and talk with me, and they're always full of questions. It's when I talk about being a kid like them and how this all started with a dream, you see their eyes lighten up. We talk about how I did it, and I tell them that they can do it too. To look into a child's eyes and tell them if they dare to dream and do the work, they can, su they can succeed. Uh, the power to believe in yourself and inspire others through sport depends upon fair play. Now that I'm retired, I'm frequently asked if I think anybody will ever win more medals than me in my lifetime. My answer to that question is I hope so. I'd like to think there's some little boy or girl out there now with an even bigger dream, an even stronger drive to work harder than I ever did to do something that's never been done before. But for that to happen, he or she must believe they will get a fair opportunity to compete. If we allow our confidence in fair play to erode, we will undermine the power of sport and the goals and dreams of future generations. The time to act is now. We must do what is necessary to ensure the system is fair and reliable so we all can believe in it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee.